The diagram shows a quadrilateral A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. With vertices at 1, 0. A is 1, 0. B is 1, 5. C is 5, 2. And D is 4, minus 1. Show that the vector A, C is 4, 2. Find the vector B, D. And show that A, C is perpendicular to B, D. So, if we annotate the diagram first of all by putting the coordinates on, we have to show that the vector A to C, A to C, is 4, 2. So A to C is the same as going A to 0 plus 0 to C. So you are going against um, 0, A, so you go, it becomes minus 1, 0. And then you have to add O, C, which is 5, 2. Minus 1 plus 5 is 4, and 0 plus 2 is 2. Okay, that's good because we had to actually show that, so we know that's true. And then we now apply that to find B, C. B, sorry, B, D. B, D is this vector here. So to do that, I'm going to have to go to B, O plus O, D. It's always a good idea to write this out first. B, O is going against the coordinates of that one, so it's been minus 1, minus 5, plus O, D, which is with the coordinates, which is 4, minus 1. Minus 1 plus 4 is 3. Minus 5 plus minus 1 is minus 6. Right, we now have to show that these two vectors are perpendicular. So to do that, we use the scalar product. So we find a, a C dot B, D. This is called the scalar product. So that's 4, 2 dot 3 minus 6. And then we get 4 times 3 plus 2 times minus 6. So that's 12 minus 12, which is 0. Now, if the scalar product is 0, that is the condition for two vectors being perpendicular. So therefore, we therefore say that AC is perpendicular to B, BC. This is quite important we've shown this because we need to do this in a, in a, in a, in a, in a later part of the question. Right. To sound take the diagram, it says the line AC has an equation R is equal to U plus S V. These uh, R, U, and V are uh, vectors. S is a scalar uh, quantity. This is the uh, vector equation of the line. Write down the vector U and the vector V. So just write that down. So what we need to do is find the vector equation of this line here and this line here for the next part. R, A, C is going to be U plus S, V. This is called the vector equation of the line. The U stands for a point on the line. It could be that point or that point. It doesn't matter which one. And V is a vector parallel to the line. So if we start with this R, you must make sure we write in the R is 1, 0. So that's a point on the line, O, A. Plus lambda times this vector here, which we just worked out to be 4, 2. However, 4, 2 can be simplified down to 2, 1. And it's probably better to write it like this. R, A, C, 1, 0, plus S, 2, 1. You should realise, though, that this answer is not unique. There are many other possibilities. You could have 5, 2 plus S, 2, 1, for example. So U is 1, 0, V is 2, 1. And you could have written 4, 2 here, and that would still be correct. Now, I'm applying that to find the vector equation of BD. Our BD will be OB plus mu BD. So OB is 1, 5, and mu... Uh, plus mu BD will be the vector that we found for this one, which is 3 minus 6. But we can actually simplify 3 minus 6 to 1 minus 2. Again, that could have been correct, or that could have been incorrect. And T is just a parameter. It's different because uh, this is mu times 3 minus 6. This is a different parameter, T times 1 times 1 minus 2. It doesn't really matter. Okay. The lines A, C, and B, D intersect at the point 3K. So this is the point where they intersect. This is 3K. You have to show that K is equal to 1. So let's just take this vector equation here, this line. Where the lines intersect, 3K, then 3K must be on this line, which is 3K is equal to 1, 0, plus S, 2, 1. And then we can solve for s on using the x component. We get 3 is equal to 1 plus 2 times s. 
2 is equal to 2s, and therefore we can see that s is equal to 1. Right, if s is equal to 1, we now solve for the y component, so k will be equal to 0 plus 1 times s. We know that s is 1 from the previous part here, so k will be equal to 0 plus 1, and we've shown that k is equal to 1 as required. It then says, hence, find the area of this triangle here. To find the area of a triangle, you have to have base times the height. And we can say that because we, we can find the magnitude of AC, and we can find the vector BD and find its magnitude, and we already know that AC and BD are perpendicular. We found that out in a, in a previous part. So therefore, the area of the triangle will be base times the height. So the magnitude of AC, which is the magnitude length of this vector here, and use Pythagoras' theorem for that. And remember that AC was 4, 2. Don't use the one that's been uh, cancelled down. This is 4, 2, so that's going to be the square root of 4 squared plus 2 squared, which is the square root of 16 plus 4, which is the square root of 20. We'll leave that like that. And vector PD... So this vector here, PD, is the same as going PO plus PD. PO, we can go against the uh, arrows, so that's going to be, uh, as uh, P is 0 0.31, then going against the arrows will be minus 3, minus 1. We found 1 over here. Plus the coordinates of D, which are 4, minus 1, which minus 3 plus 4 gives me 1, and minus 1 plus minus 1 is minus 2. Now the magnitude of PD is going to be the square root of 1 squared plus minus 2 squared. So that gives me one, uh, 1 squared plus 4, 1 plus 4 which is 5, square root of 5, leave it as square root of 5. And then the area of triangle ACD is a half of the magnitude of AC times PD. So it's going to be a half times the square root of 20 that we just found for magnitude of AC times the square root of 5. The square root of 20 times the square root of 5 gives me the square root of 100. The square root of 100 is 10. And half of 10 is, gives the final answer of 5 square units. So this is a vector equation, a um, vector's uh, question. And maybe a good way to do it is to make sure you draw clear diagrams and annotate them clearly so that you can see what you're doing. I hope this has been useful and I thank you very much for watching.